Hello, and welcome to the People's Mental Stimulus Update. In today's update, we are going to talk about dangerous candies. That's right, you heard me. Dangerous candies. You, you wouldn't think of that candy to be dangerous, and I'm not talking about the candies that, you know, where people like to, ha to stash stupid crap in it, like needles or razor blades. I'm talking about actual candy. I actually have a about a 10 to 11 minute video for you that actually explains what these candies are and why they're so dangerous and trust me some of the stuff i've seen off this i didn't even know it was even possible i mean there's a candy on here back from when i was a kid called candy cigarettes i'm not sure how many of you guys remember about those candy cigarettes and how good they were how good they tasted i didn't even know the the hidden secret about how you could just blow through them and they'd puff out a, a sure little thing of a confection sugar out of tip like he's actually smoking. I didn't even know that. I just said, eat a damn thing. I actually used to love those things. But wow, some of the secrets that that candy held was amazing. But um, like I said, this is about dangerous candies that could kill you and possibly will kill you if you eat them. As well as other stuff behind the scenes about the candy making process so if you'll stick with me i will be right back after this video i'm sorry i can't say short video but after this video about dangerous candies so thank you according to an old legend if you stand in front of a mirror and say his name five times he will appear and you will become his victim he is the ghost of a mysterious man who gave children free candy with razor blades inside. According to one version, he wasn't just killed, but covered in honey all over his naked body. After that, bees stung him to death. Now he's taking revenge on anyone who doesn't believe he exists. Candyman. The reality is that you don't have to summon Candyman to get hurt from eating candy. Every year, the world witnesses terrible events involving sweets and gum, which become the basis for new scary legends. In this video, you'll find out why did they ban one popular ordinary candy? Who brought candy full of needles to America? Why can't you chew the same gum for too long? And who's trying to kill us with candy? If you eat this candy with sugar every day, you get lung cancer. Say what? Sounds like a warning message on tobacco products, doesn't it? That's because we're talking about candy cigarettes. This candy went on sale in the early 20th century. No forbidden ingredients, just sugar, gelatin, and flavoring. But they looked like real cigarettes. They were also wrapped in paper and arranged in packs. They even smoked like real cigarettes. All you had to do was blow into the stick and a puff of powdered sugar came out the other end looking just like smoke. It would appear those were almost just like edible toys, but the concept of smoking as a harmless game stuck in kids' heads, and they became real-life heavy smokers later in life, some of them years later, whereas others beginning in high school. Who would think of starting such a kind of mess hypnosis? Candy man. No. The correct answer is confectionery and tobacco companies. The Hershey Corporation was the first to introduce sweet candy cigarettes to customers. In the tobacco giants, Philip Morris International and Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation supported the production. They considered it a great opportunity to raise an army of future consumers and allowed their logos to be used on the packs of candy cigarettes. Kids started imitating adults as a joke at first, and then later, of course, with damage to their health. It's interesting that when Philip Morris decided to stop allowing the labeling of these edible candy cigarettes with their logo, the confectioners were absolutely outraged. It had been a mutually beneficial deal. 
a deal that could have killed an entire generation if that candy hadn't been banned in almost every country in the world, though they still can be found on the internet among other dubious products, such as Hippie Sippy, multicolored edible pellets. The Made in Japan Hippie Sippy went on sale in the 1960s, and they immediately made parents anxious because they were visually similar to a syringe full of heroin. The candy was a plastic toy filled with colorful balls. To get the chocolate, you had to suck a straw similar to a hypodermic needle, and the colorful chocolate balls were supposed to represent the ups and downs of a drug trip. The main importer in the United States was... Candyman? No, a 60-year-old entrepreneur, Sidney J. Albert was described by the mass media as a gently, deeply ethical person. His candy lasted on the shelves for a year before its sale was completely banned. If you keep a sour candy in your mouth for too long, you will forget your name. In 2007, hundreds of Americans across the country were conducting sour contests or sour challenges, the essence of which was to keep a sour candy in your mouth for as long as possible. The fun lasted until a lethal dose of lead was found in the candy. Who decided to add lead to candy? candy. Actually, it was Candy Dynamics Incorporated, an American company known for its super, ooper duper sour candy called Nuclear Sludge. Their toxic waste chew bars, which happened to be poisoned, were produced in Pakistan in conditions that were not intended for food handling. The California Department of Healthcare Services reported lead level elevations three times the upper limit of normal. Poisoning with that much lead can lower one's IQ level and cause severe neurological disorders. Thus, once you've filled your stomach full of toxic bars, you really can lose the ability to say your own name. Truly terrifying. But the consequences of the next candy are even more serious. If you constantly chew gum, one day, one of its pieces could explode in your mouth. A Ukrainian chemistry student, to prolong the taste of his favorite gum, would always dip it in citric acid before chewing, until one day, something terrible happened. Candy man. Worse. The student put the gum in his mouth, but the very first movement of his teeth was followed by an explosion. The guy ended up on the floor without his lower jaw, covered in blood. He died 10 minutes later from what's called a pain crisis. What was it really? The young chemist, instead of using citric acid, accidentally dipped his gum in a self-made explosive he was going to use for scientific purposes. He just mixed up the two containers. This mistake turned out to be his last, and unfortunately fatal. Horrifying, indeed. But this next sweet kill can hardly be called an accident. If a father eats ladoos on his first child's birthday, he'll die. In 2016, in the Punjab province of Pakistan, a father of a family went to a neighborhood bakery for sweet ladoo buns. He had a newborn son, and the desserts were intended for a big celebration. Nobody could imagine that the celebration would turn into a funeral for 11 people, and that the infant boy would be left an orphan. But as it happened, everyone who consumed ladoos for dessert died. But who poisoned the ladoos? the baker and his colleagues. They were all arrested for deliberately poisoning more than 70 people in the village. It turned out that the bakery employees had graciously agreed to keep in their kitchen hazardous pesticides from a nearby store, which was temporarily closed for renovation. The investigators were never able to understand the true motives of the bakers, but the fact of the deliberate poisoning was difficult to deny. There was just too much pesticide in the tested buns. It couldn't have gotten there by accident. 
There they are, legends you really do need to fear. Because that is our reality. A reality where entrepreneurial greed and marketers' crazy ideas have killed more people than Candyman. Candyman ain't a he. Candyman's the whole damn high. And the last legend I left for, well, dessert, shall we say. It says any candy can kill you if you try hard enough. Be my victim. That is the conclusion reached by researchers from the American Chemical Society, which conducted an experiment to determine how much candy would be a lethal dose for a human being. Using some of the most famous Halloween candy types, such as candy corn and sugar babies, scientists calculated a lethal dose of sugar. For the average adult weighing 180 pounds, about five and a half pounds of sugar would be fatal. This means that if you, for example, decide to record an ASMR video of you eating candy corn, you shouldn't tuck into more than 1,500 candies in one go. And as you saw, it's a lot of candy, isn't it? I mean, wow. I mean, gummy candies is up there. I mean, candy cigarettes is up there. Oh, gosh, I think I know there's, there's like a lot of other candies on there as well, but... The one that still sticks with me is the candy cigarettes. I mean, come on. I, I did not realize that. Well, I, I figured, you know, the candy cigarettes were because of the tobacco corporations wanting to capitalize on getting a younger uh, focus group to be their new smoker candidates. And they, granted, it did work with a lot of people. But I only got those damn things because I used to eat them. I didn't smoke them because I, they're candy. You don't smoke candy. I just eat them and crunch them down as. I eat the whole pack in like an hour or less because they tasted so good. But wow, they were backed by tobacco companies just to get new smokers. Isn't that just terrible? But before I go on and rant and rave and bore you with my voice or anything else, uh, I'm going to actually wish you guys a very happy and a very wonderful evening. Please stay safe out there. Remember, we're all in this together. So until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye.